appreciate it. Amen. Sister Sharon has a song for us titled Thanks for all the things you've done for us. Amen. the strength to give to simply carry on through life toss and test my words than best you never let me lower you always right beside me and you hear me when I pray and since I first began you've been my dearest friend I give you all the praise Even in my bad times When everything's going wrong Even on the mountain top Your loving presence makes me strong Each and every moment Of each and every I'm gonna sing and shout, I'm gonna let the rocks cry out, I give you all the praise, oh, thanks, thank you Lord, I give you thanks, for all that you have thorn in my life, I am so moments and I will continually every day I live to keep the praise I'm blessed upon the here I can't forget the moments in my life that you made such a change and since the spirit came I'm not the same I give you all the praise. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you thanks for all that you have thorn in my life. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. 
That song, blessed be the name of the Lord. I give you thanks for all the things you've done in my life. You may listen to that song, here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Amen. In that song, creating me a clean heart, oh God, as we invite God's servant. Clear. 
spirit. Oh, just raise your hands and close your eyes. As we sing, create in me, sing, create. this evening Lord God I thank you for the song service thank you for the strength to keep pressing on commit those that are on their way coming and those that will not be able to make it into your great hands Lord may you visit wherever your children are gathered at this time and meet all of our needs as I commit the rest of this service into your great hands with thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Yeah. Appreciate the special sister. Sharon. We give you thanks. Good evening. It's good to be back here. For um, this communion service after over a year that we've uh, gathered like this for this, so trusting the Lord will uh, give us a wonderful time in his presence. Let's turn to our Bibles, um, St. Luke chapter 22. St. Luke 22, reading from verse 
15 to 19. I read some of these words. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And they took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. God bless you. May we see that. Praise the Lord. I have a title this evening, The Adoption of Sons. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's, a, there's something about knowing who you are. We are told that and here, as long as it's a child, different, nothing from a servant. It's as good as a servant because he can't stand his grounds. But when you know who you are, it makes a difference. Praise the Lord. So tonight, talking about the adoption of sons. Let's think of Abraham. When there was battle, five kings versus four kings. And in the course of the battle, his nephew was captured. And goods and things. Abraham, knowing who he was, called of God, has been training in training by God. And he had trained servants born in his own house. And he said, I can't take this. So he armed his trained servants. Four kings could not defeat five kings. And they captured all of them. And now here, one man, one family, Hallelujah. with his servants, going to face five kings. Train servants. He armed them. Friends, we are not just gathering here for naught. If you think we're gathering here for naught, you are mistaken. We are in training. Being trained to conform into his own image. And I know it will not be a failure. I know God doesn't make mistakes. Somebody shout amen. amen. So as I'm standing here tonight. Right now God called man. God trained man. Sometimes it looks as if the whole thing is falling down. But before you know it. Somebody shout amen. amen. So everything that is happening to you, to me, to whoever, I am predestinated. Amen. Not just to sit in church tonight, but I'm predestinated unto the adoption of sons. Amen. And I know nothing will stand on my way. Amen. Because I know who I am. Can you say amen? amen. Here he was. He couldn't take it. He didn't go to ask for advice. He just stood his ground. He armed his servants. They stepped forward. Heading towards five nations. With their kings. And their armies. One family. Hallelujah. 
and he overtook them. They divided themselves. This is not something of, well, if we win, Abraham will take the glory. You know, sometimes we save God as if, if we succeed, the pastor takes the glory or the deacon board or something. Brother Abraham said, whatever your position is in church, what we are doing, you are doing it for God. You are not doing it for all my neighbor. Can you say amen? If you stand flat footed, you are standing for God. If the devil terrorizes you, God gives him that opportunity for you to tell who you are. Okay? God is here. I know it for a fact. Yesterday we came for prayer meeting and I kept hearing a sister coughing and coughing and I, and I said, Lord, who is this sister coughing? Please, take this cough off. Let's... So, and I, 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 after that I started listening again if I'll hear that cough. And I didn't hear it again till we finished. So, when you ask God something... God must do it. I use must. Must is that he will answer you but it may not be the way you want it. But he will answer. Because you are a son. Say amen. If he says no, you know that that no is better than yes. If he says yes, you know no devil can say no. Yes. Say amen. amen. Yeah, I know some of you are tired. It's a long time. We've had double service. But brother, I am filled with power by the spirit of the Lord. No devil can hold me down. Hallelujah. The chop that will take the rapture is not going to be a weakling. It's going to be born sons. Few songs speak and their word is packed. Somebody shout amen. amen. Oh, glory. Amen. Glory. So when he was coming back, Melchizedek, this great prince, met him. Wow. You can imagine when we fight this battle to the end. And he said, I won't eat this again until. I won't drink this again until. You can imagine. Facing what we are facing. Still standing. Reminds me of one battle the Israelites went to fight. And they said, weak or tired or something, but still pursuing. They got worn out. And they were still pursuing. So you have no excuse to sit back and say, if this brother knows what I'm passing through. There's nothing you're passing through that somebody else has not passed through. And let me tell you, you have not finished passing through yet. Because as long as you are here, God must achieve his purpose in your life. So let the weak say, I'm strong. We have a message. Malachi for sent I mean God sent Malachi for Elijah to return us back to the original faith. And I was thinking of Brother Paul. What he was going through. The beating. Whatever. And this man didn't get bothered. He kept moving. I said, God being present does not keep you away from troubles. Christ was on earth when John the Baptist was beheaded. He didn't stop it. He was on earth. When the tomb of Siloam fell on how many people? The only thing he could say was, we could say was that you think those were the worst sinners? Except you repent, you shall likewise perish. And you think the ones that Herod mingled with the sacrifice are the, were the worst sinners? So God being present does not keep you away from troubles, 
from circumstances that you cannot explain. Praise the Lord. So he's here. That means whatever you face, he's there all the time. And you should build up confidence that since he's here, I cannot fail. Come on somebody, give him a shout. Because he has sons, God has sent forth his spirit, the spirit of his son, into your hearts crying, Abba, Father, praise the Lord. So Melchizedek met Abraham. What a time it was, brother. I will, you say, I wish I was in that army and you are here in another army. The final army, the final battle. Trained, trained by God directly. Because this journey must be finished. If you have weaklings there, let those that are afraid turn back. And God knows how to do the test. Hallelujah. He must achieve his purpose in your life. We cannot fail. It's too late to fail. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, let's have the adoption. Page 108, paragraph 42. And Brother Abraham said there, paragraph 42. Let me see. He said, what's the mystery? Before then, he said, for this man, he said that Paul was talking or writing. King of Salem, priest of the Most High God. Imagine God himself meeting you after a fight. To welcome you. So, you don't well. Hallelujah. What five kings couldn't do that because? I mean, what four kings? Because it was Lot's side that was defeated and captured. Abraham, train servants. He said, stop worrying me, Joe. I don't know what all this trouble of message, message is all about. But people are being trained. People are being trained. There will be a rapture. I know it for a fact. I know it. I'm so certain of it. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. What's the mystery? Now, here's the mystery. What is, who is this fellow making, knowing the mystery of his will? This Melchizedek. I'm waiting for everybody here. The Bible is still wrong, turning. Hebrews 7 chapter, Paul speaking. Same man of Galatians. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And blessed going out. And blessed coming in. You say you are blessed and all these troubles are. Oh yes. I'm blessed. Don't you know? My. If God don't love you. He doesn't discipline you. He doesn't expose you to things that will make you strong. Praise the Lord. That's what bro Israel was talking about this morning. It's elective love. He exposes you to everything he feels is good for you. And you may be crying. But he knows that what he has put in your soul, he's going to get it out. And it will be to, to the glory of his grace. So, not one shall be left behind. So now, this man is a King of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessing, to whom also Abraham gave a part, ten parts of all. First being interpretation, by interpretation, king of righteousness, after that, king of Salem. Who is this fellow? Which is king of peace? Without father, without mother, Without descent, having neither beginning of days nor ending of life, whoever he is is still alive. Hallelujah. 
And one of these days, we will take this communion up there in heaven. Ah, there will be a big stretch of people. Overcomers of different ages. And God's own son will be the leading one. In that meeting in the air. Praise the Lord. I refuse to see you tired. Because what God has reserved for you is greater than tiredness. Amen. I refuse to see you discouraged because of the things you are facing. Hallelujah. Real trained soldier is trained ruggedly. We are exposed to all kinds of hazards. Because nobody knows what you are going to face. But all you know is that you are called to be a soldier. But this time we are talking of soldiers of the cross. Glory! And sometimes some get so scared of the flying bullets that there are some that are so intoxicated. They want to fight. Hallelujah. The more they hear the sound of the battle, the more they get charged. And tonight, I feel charged. Listen, because the devil is challenging the wrong person. He thinks by challenging and challenging and challenging that I'm going to know is going to make me stronger. Praise the Lord. My, oh my, somebody. Am I shouting too much? Glory, brother. Amen. I was telling somebody that all the secret of serving God, I want to do something for God, love him. I said, when you see a brother that loves God, he doesn't want to miss prayer meeting. He doesn't want to miss this. doesn't want to miss this. He can do something for God. Because when the devil begins to discourage him, his love to do something for God is greater than discouragement. But if you get somebody who is once in a while, one kick, he will give up or the devil will just derail him or her and will just start playing games. So the secret is love the Lord. And before you can love him correctly, you must be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Because Peter said, even if everybody forsake you, me, I will not. Without the Holy Ghost, and when the chips were down, you heard it this morning. But when he got the Holy Ghost, Acts, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He stood there, he wrecked them. He, glory! There's a difference between David in the flesh and David in the spirit. When you get in the spirit, the whole thing is different. You can't take no for an answer. Praise the Lord. The way you feel about things is different. And David somehow, God, had trained him enough to put him in that battlefield. When he didn't even know it. And he walked in there. And watched how everybody was terrified. Complaining about this, complaining about that. Complaining about this, complaining about that. He said, wait, wait, wait. Who is this guy? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Defying the armies of the living God. And his brother started feeling well. Who did you leave those few sheep to? I know you came in here to show yourself or something. He said, he said, no recourse. He said, no recourse. Everybody should feel challenged in this hour that is born again. Filled with the Holy Ghost. When you see people terrified, 
beginning to question this question that are going down, down, down. Few challenge. Say, for me and my house, I'll save the Lord. If it comes to a spot that you have to say, now death, forgive me. Not us. Give me this mountain. Possessing your individual inheritance. Oh, brother, I'm looking for a rapture. I'm not praying the rapture should come now because I want victory in my life. I'm not going to be raptured a weakling, a backslider. I'm going to be raptured born songs, feel songs, speak their word is bad. You talk to God and he answers you. He shows himself at life among us. Wagging himself up and down the midst of the is his word. Praise the Lord. Amen. Page 25, paragraph 185. Um, paragraph 185 says, He's looking for her character, the character of Christ. Now, just a moment. Now, that's it. He chooses a bride to reflect his character, to which the modern churches of today certainly misses his program here a million miles because they deny this to be the truth so how could it be now he's looking for the day for that bride to be formed Hebrews 13 just exactly like it was like he was it's got to be his same flesh same bones same spirit same everything. Just exactly built up. And them two then become one. Until the church becomes that. They are not one. The character of him. The word for this age. Must be molded. She must be molded like he is. And character is not a gift. It's a victory. So I can't go down. All these petty trials, they cannot be compared with the glory that shall be revealed Amen. in us. Amen. So it's petty trials. I know we are living in the wall everywhere, it's rocking with filth and things and oh, how sons of God are so helpless sometimes. So very helpless. But God have put a seed in your soul. And that seed is a gem of life. And that gem, you can't hide life. Life will show itself. So no matter what the devil does, I shall rise again. No matter how Satan thinks he has caught you in a corner, Satan cannot corner you. As Royce Ray said, God will do everything to protect his own. He doesn't go for what is not his. But when it's his own, he will have to bankrupt heaven before he can lose you. So God cannot lose you. One thing is that we just think life will go on like this. But every day people are passing on. Believers, unbelievers, 400 level, 100 level, all kinds of levels, with their tall vision. So sometimes I feel God. Why is it that these people don't realize they need you? Why is it that they like religiosity going to church? just for fun than having an experience with the supernatural and begin to save you. Why don't they think that one of these days could end their life and that means end death? You don't know how privileged you are that God lets you see that Christ died for you. 
and you accepted it by predestination, how can we ever fail to love him? How can little headache and things so scare you and you think you are finished? Why wouldn't you just dedicate your love to him and just desire with all your heart, Lord, I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. And then try to get your friends, your brothers to see it. But the people are interested in religion, going to church, singing in the choir, fasting, but they don't want to know him. And that's where the danger is. Nobody sitting here should play with his soul. Get in touch with God and say, Lord, if I've ever desired to know you tonight, oh my, God help us. Praise the Lord. Adoption, page 111, paragraph 56 and 57. And Brother Abraham say, said here, yeah, tell a dead man he's a hypocrite and see what happens. Kick him in the side and say, you old hypocrite, you. He will not say a word. And that's right. He will just lay there. And a man that's dead in Christ, you could call him hypocrite, call him anything you want to. He will never raise up about it. If anything, he will slip off somewhere and pray for you. That's right. But oh, some of them is very much alive. And that's what I think about. We're supposed to bury dead people. Them that's dead in Christ, we bury them in water. Sometimes we bury too many people that's alive. Too much malice and strife and there's too much in the church and we can't separate that but God does yes. so we need a killing we need to die yes. we including me yes. nobody has it yet we are striving yes. until death do you stop striving yes. amen Whatever you think your condition is, but God has been keeping you alive. Sometimes with something that cannot keep somebody going for one night, one day. Come to ask yourself, how have I been surviving? So it's not by might. It's not by power. It's not your making. God knows just what he's doing. Keep calling on him. Call on him. He answers. He never fails. You say, I've been praying now for so long. Keep praying. Remember the unjust judge and the widow woman. Every day, every day. And Christ said, see what the unjust judge can say. What about God? That is, he'll cry unto him day and night. Won't he be able to answer you? He said he will. So now, at thy word, paragraph E3, he said, I believe that we must be born for, for these things. I do that. I believe that we are all baptized with the Holy Spirit and brought into the body. And then we become sons. But then after sons, there's a placing of sons. Or the adoption of sons. And the Pentecostal people, it's not there. But the Pentecostal people has never come to the place where the church is getting now. To the adoption or the placing of sons. Listen. Your adoption is not your birth. Your adoption is your blessing. Hallelujah. I 
as long as you remain a child, your dad knows he cannot trust you for some things. Amen? He could give you his estate overnight. You sell everything off. But when you become matured, and he's watching you, he's watching you, he gets reports, he has tutors, has my boy behaving it just like you, Amen. He said, that's my boy. I can place him. I can adopt him. So some of us don't really mind what report that gets back to the father. You know, we used to have first term report, second term report, third term report, when school was still school. If you fail the third term, you can't be promoted to the new class. But now, you know it's my son. I don't have enough money to, re, to pay for that fees. Let him go. And they even have a language, let my people go. That's not the nasty ones that say, mbe, 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 mbe. Those, those, those ones, it's a misfit. They shouldn't have gone to school in the first place. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow then, you begin to blame your parents. That's you. you are talking to deaf people. Even those who know your background. That you had all the opportunities to do something for yourself. But you misused it. And you say, well, if I had parents who care. You have a parent that cares. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Shalom. The Lord shall provide. Just have the burden, a desire for a real something. Take it to God and watch him show himself alive and powerful on your behalf. Oh my adoption, part two, part two paragraph. 201 back up 201 and brought Abraham sit there see where it is my God amen back up 201 it says but how how are we going to do it this way see it just bomb 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 haphazard anyway no placing at all now that's see efficiency we are trying See, they miss that. See, then they miss it. We are predestinated unto the adoption of sons. Now, how many understands what I mean? Raise your hand. Adoption. We are born in the Spirit of God. Sure. Receive the Holy Ghost and cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are, that's right. We are children. But we can't get nowhere. We can't whip the Philistines. But the Philistines must be whipped. And it takes training. If you fall, get up. It takes training. Stand flat-footed. Go after the lost. Don't create an atmosphere of discouragement. You hear somebody say, maybe this is the way I will die. Don't say, well, if it pleases God. Glory. Glory. Say, come on, brother. Come on, sister. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Create a different, counter that atmosphere. Yes. The devil wants to hear negativity. Speak the word. That word is life. Oh, praise the Lord. Adoption, part four, paragraph 40. I think that's page 110. Paragraph 40 to 51. Um, well, let's just take 
paragraph 50 and 51. Jesus had a father. Jesus had a mother. Jesus had a beginning of days. Jesus had an ending of earthly life. But this man had neither father nor mother. Amen. No father nor mother. Jesus had both father and mother. This man had neither father nor mother. Amen. And what did he do? After the battle was over, after Abraham had took his position. Take your position, friends. Don't let anybody push you off your position. Take it. Positionally, take it. Fight it on your knee. All those gossip spirits and things that Satan trying to make you such a loose tool. Stop it! Mind business with God. Jacob realized his condition and he looked for God. He knew that if he played that kind of game, his life was going to be ruined. So he said, God, this is time I need you. Help me. And he held on there. Feeling good wasn't enough. I felt the angel present wasn't enough. I will not let you go until you change me. I need a change. Some of us know baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is right. And we won't do it. Those are those puzzling sides. That is between you and God. So there's a challenge somewhere. People know the truth. But they're not willing. They want to be religious. They want to be nice. You don't make heaven by being nice. You make heaven by staying with the word. What did, what did Judas say? This thing would have been sold for 300 pence and given to the poor. But Christ had a different opinion. So you can be over nice sometimes. You can be over wicked. You can be over righteous. I think there's a scripture that says that. To always seek the will of God. Where to be in position. Oh my. So those gossip, tattling spirits and things, until you can't pray. If you are not tattling, you become restless. Ah, don't make me a church member, Lord. Make me a witness. I want to love you so much. I, that scripture brought Israel referred to this morning. I was thinking of it, Job. Elihu who said, if you are wicked, you think your wickedness will affect God? Or if you are righteous, your righteousness will profit him. He said, your righteousness might benefit a fellow human being. So whatever we are, is for the good of us. What will you benefit to finish running me down and I appear? <laughs> Brother, God, God, God. How right you find out that you have to be a real smart guy to be a work on my brother. But if you still have conscience, uh, bro, welcome. Uh, which I think is better than welcome my brother. Don't welcome like that. Say, Lord, I don't want to continue like this. Turn me around. I want to say the right things about people. A real, a real man, a real woman. A, he wants to make the other person feel better than themselves. But when you want everybody to know that you are better, you have a problem. And only God can solve that problem. No other person. Where are we? After the church takes its position, we are called to the adoption of sons by the Holy Spirit. And when each man, not just pastor, not just deacon, not just song leader, not just anybody, when each man Everybody that is a believer 
takes his position. What God has called him to do. So you must find out what your calling is. Not Ephraim trying to go to Manasseh's land and things. Which is your portion? Is it to raise oats? Or whatever. What God has called him to do. And stand to the end of the road. Going after the loss. Not, I beg, I don't do those things anymore. I don't go to church again. Or I, I don't. They are not standing on. You're not, you're not going to see Melchizedek welcome you at the end of this battle. But you stand until he calls you home. Amen. And if it pleases him to keep you alive to his coming, you keep standing. Amen. Inspiring people. Praying on your knee. A praying mother. Amen. Amen. So don't get scared. Why would we fear? Nothing can harm us unless God allows it. So by faith, Moses, paragraph 134, if there is one ought in your heart against any person, sinner or a saint, you are in danger of hell fire. Any person. That's the level of life God wants us to live. Where we, even if it's the unconscious one, Bro Israel was talking about, stay in his presence until he takes it off. First, recognize that that problem is there. So I say, love everybody, right or wrong, sin or saint, love them anyhow. Because efficiency is what bridges between denomination and the glory land. If we don't hit the efficiency, then we are still in denomination. But when you hit it, that's a bridge. That's a bridge. And across that bridge, so all your efforts, I may not see them, but God sees them. And it's actually God inspiring you to make that effort to the glory of his grace. Amen. God in you. Sometimes you don't even know why you wouldn't be able to stay home at this, this, this. God is working. Amen. Somebody must hear that testimony once. This person lived in your city. Did the same job. Attended the same school. Oh, God bless you, somebody. Hallelujah. So it's adoption time. It's a time we can't take no for an answer. It's a time to climb these seven steps to perfection. Climb it. It's not a gift. Seven bed pains. Bed pains. It does. Normal bed pains. Praise the Lord. And it it has three stages. Water, blood, spirit. And you go through the same kind of process in the spiritual. But we must climb this. First you must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't get a natural man to see spiritual things. Because he's born natural. For him to begin to see spiritual things, he must be born again. Even Brother Paul said, a carnal man does not understand the things of God. Because it's natural. So I don't pair up with unbelievers. I don't mean, I don't mean, um, that I can isolate myself. But what I mean is, the things I see, he cannot see. Because he's re relying on his natural birth. And he's trying to understand something that is in another realm. And to begin to understand at that realm, first, 
you must be born again. Then you are born into another world. You begin to learn how to walk, how to talk, and things. Praise the Lord. Musicians, I'm done. Um, we've come this far by faith. And um, I'm so happy that is grace. Uh, what's that song again? There's a fountain filled with blood. I'm so happy that his grace has been so sufficient. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And I'm so happy that it's in this age that we are talking about adoption. And the more the pressure, the more the precious children of God are advancing. So, no devil can tell me that there will be no rapture. Oh, God bless you. As we let you sing that song. There is. Dying lamb, da, da, yang lamb, your precious blood shall never Precious Heavenly Father, I thank you at this time for your mercy. Lord, as we're ready to switch the order of the service, I pray you'll sanctify us, Lord. We are in need of you, Father. Dear God, may you bless your children. May you visit each person, Lord. May we have an experience tonight like we've never had before. Lord, bless the reading of your word and give strength to your people, I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus Christ's name. One more time, Lord, as we will be departing from here, I pray you go before your children defeat every power of the enemy. Grant us good night rest, Father, I pray. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.